That is satisfying. Two years ago, we moved on to this 1960s farmstead, and there's one main issue that we've encountered since we've been here. We simply do not have enough storage space. Now, we are not people that need a big fancy house with lots of additional storage, but being a farm, we do need proper food storage. Our pantry also doubles as a laundry room and it's fairly tiny. So we are completely maxed out in that space and we're just trying to find every nook and cranny that we can utilize, which brings us to today's project. And that is the garage. It is not pretty, but it does its job and it stays dry. This space has always been kind of a hot mess. It's always disorganized. It's hard to keep things together in here. We already have freezers full of chicken and we also have sheep and pigs being processed very soon. So we need more space. So I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the plan. So as you come into the garage here, this back corner we've already kind of cleared out, but we're gonna build a room. It's gonna be fully insulated, fully enclosed, and that's gonna be freezer storage. So the plan is to have three freezers, one fridge, and this will house all of our meat. So we'll have lamb, pig, uh, chicken, and we'd like to locally source some beef and eventually raise our own beef. That is the goal. But inside the room, we're also gonna have a ton of shelving for canned goods and canning supplies and other things like that, that we really just don't have space for. Everything's kind of stacked up in the garage. It gets dusty, it gets dirty out here. So this back room will also double as storage for that stuff. One thing we've already done is we've re rewired this entire garage. So every freezer and fridge is gonna have its own dedicated breaker in case something happens, we don't lose all of our meat at once. These will be for the new outlets in the room. Um, we've added additional outlets throughout the entire garage for a future shop area. Um, so we're ready to go as far as the electrical. Now I just need to clean this area a little bit before I start framing out the room and building it out. All right, I made some good progress today. Finished wiring everything up. Got the light switch in here. I am waiting on a door and a couple of new replacement windows to go in here as well. We're getting there. Sheep and pigs are getting processed soon, so we gotta keep moving. All right, a lot has been accomplished since I last turned on the camera. I installed a door, I installed windows, I prepped a lot of stuff, but didn't really feel like showing that. It's not all that exciting. But today is the very exciting part of this project because I get to insulate this room with spray foam, which I've never done before and I'm super excited to try out a new kit, which brings me to today's sponsor of this video. So today's sponsor is Ixer Pro. I think I'm saying that right. Ixer Pro. I've never spray foamed anything before and I'm really excited to try this out. It looks super intuitive, super DIY friendly. So we're gonna give that a whirl today. Thanks again to Ixer Pro for sponsoring this video. I picked Ixer Pro products because they seem to be super DIY friendly and they come with literally everything you need. Let's get into the box and I'll show you what I mean. So this is a closed cell formula, so it's gonna be nice and firm. It's got a high R value, 5.66 R value per inch. The kit also comes with some safety gear. You got gloves, a suit, goggles, 
Again, it seems super easy for pros or DIY people like myself. This product is great for walls, attics, basements, crawl spaces, garages, around pipes. There's a lot of applications. I'll obviously be using this in this garage room today. All right, so there's two types of tips for the gun. Uh, the one labeled one is for wall applications and then there's one labeled two for ceiling applications, which we will be doing. So we'll be able to test both. This goes right on the end there. All right, you gotta shake this up really good. 20 to 30 seconds. Here we go, moment of truth. Ah, uh, I was told you gotta spray a little water first. I don't know why. Oh yeah. That is satisfying. That's the first can already. Not gonna lie, that was fun. Let's see if I can do a little better this time. Oop, I didn't shake it. When you're applying the product, you got to make sure you shake the can really, really well. You got to hold the gun upright and just apply a thin layer. It's going to expand pretty quickly. All right, so I'm all done spraying. Let's check it out. Pretty sweet. I'm really happy how this turned out. And honestly, it was super, super easy to apply the spray foam. Everything's very intuitive. So next steps in this space, we're gonna move the freezers in here because the pigs are coming very, very soon. I'm going to add shelving underneath this window, a couple shelves, and Tanya is actually gonna use this to start seeds instead of our bedroom. And then I'm gonna build shelves across these big empty walls above the freezers so we can store tons of jars, canning supplies, uh, canned goods, all kinds of stuff. Thanks again to Ixer Pro for providing the spray foam and sponsoring this video. So I do really recommend this for smaller projects, but if you're building a barn dominium, a large pole barn, or something significantly larger than a space like this. I probably wouldn't do this just because this is more for smaller applications in my opinion. But if you have a small area, a garage, uh, a workshop, crawl space, um, even a, you know, room, a new addition to your house or something like that, I think this could work really, really well. Um, I am very happy with how easy it was and how well the, the product went on. Definitely two thumbs up from me. So again, if you're doing a small DIY spray foam job, Check out Ixer Pro. I'll leave a link below. And uh, 
check it out.